trying something else out today. I'm trying out switch to music mode for the best experience. Switch back when you're done. What is music mode? No, just talking. So I have a clubhouse open as well. If you guys are on clubhouse, I'm just trying it out. So I'm just testing it out. And uh, you're welcome to join there or here or whatever. But anyway, welcome everybody. My name is Luke. I'll be your teacher for this English class, live class, Q&A session lesson thingy. So it's good to have you here. We're going to be talking about, of course, questions that you have. I'll be answering those questions. We're also going to be doing a little bit of a topic. We're going to be talking about, I'm going to be talking about acronyms. So if you don't know what those are, don't worry. But I'm going to be I'm going to be talking through some of those. Should be pretty interesting. Ada says, "Is it live? It is live. Believe it or not. Believe it or not." All right. Uh, so let me just quickly update something on my end, and then we can get into the questions. Marcelo is here, and Alan Gonzalez is here. Fantastic. Wonderful. Great. Amazing. Glorious. All right. I just have to update the thumbnail here. And uh, again, if you guys are interested in checking out or following me on Clubhouse, it's a new app, uh, and I'm on there today as well because I'm I'm really I'm really just testing it out to see what's up with it. So you're welcome to you're welcome to follow me on Clubhouse. Potter, hello. What's up? Well. It's actually snowing today. It's snowing like crazy. Uh, every, everything is blanketed in, in solid white, fluffy snow, which will soon be brown and gray because of all the cars. So it looks beautiful now, but tomorrow it probably will not, sadly. All right, got that updated. Good to go. So as we usually do, if you guys have questions about pronunciation, about grammar, idioms, phrases, sentences, whatever it may be, feel free to just ask, and I will do my best to, to answer your questions completely. I'll try. I'll try. I'll try. I'll try. Um, and otherwise, we are going to be we are going to be talking about uh, an interesting topic today. If you haven't already, guys, don't forget to subscribe. And hit the like button as well. That's very important. And check out, of course, if you uh, see a description, you can check out my my links there. If you guys want to find me on Clubhouse, if you're curious, I know you probably enjoy watching, but if you if you want to find me and follow me on Clubhouse, if you're on it, you can just search at Luke Pretty. That's my name. At at symbol and then Luke Pretty. My full name, L-U-K-E-P-R-I-D-D-Y. L-U-K-E-P-R-I-D-D-Y is my name. Okay, R-A says, how are you, sir? I'm doing well. R-A, good to have you here. Leandro has a good question about gerunds and passive voice or infinitive passive voice. Okay, and I'm, I'm, I think that that infinite, the passive voice thing makes that more confusing, but... If you have a specific question, I can I can take that on. Okay. Someone says, I like your hairstyle. Yeah, I actually my hairstyle is kind of messed up today, so I apologize for that. It looks like I just got out of bed. Oops. All right. Well, maybe maybe I'll answer uh, maybe I'll answer this question we have from Leandro de Souza. Let me think for a second. When should I use gerund or infinitive passive voice mm, okay so we've got a question here from Leandro de Souza who says when should I use gerund passive voice or infinitive passive voice let me break that up because I think saying specifically gerund passive voice or infinitive passive voice will probably confuse most people. 
So let's just do this. Let's say, let's answer the question of what a gerund is, what an infinitive is, when we might do one or the other, and then and then we can talk about what passive voice means, okay? And I think that might be a simpler way because, because uh, just looking at that, I'm not quite sure what your question is by itself. Okay, so what's a gerund? Simply, a gerund, and by the way, if you don't remember the specific name of some grammar, you know, it doesn't matter. It's not important. The important thing is that you understand it, okay? Gerund is when you have an ing word that is like a noun, right? For example, if I say, I enjoy running, is running really a verb, really an action? Well, it's actually being used as a noun, right? Think about that. I enjoy running. Can I replace the word running with it? I enjoy running. I enjoy it. I enjoy that. The answer is yes. Yes. And if I say, for example, running is fun. Running is interesting. Running makes me happy. I can also replace that ing with it or that. It makes me happy. It is fun. What is fun? Running. What is it? What is running? It. It is running. So if you can replace an ing like that with it or that, then that's going to be a gerund. Now, it's not quite that simple, but that's the, that's the basic idea, okay? I could say, I can't stop laughing. I can't stop that. Okay, so that's a gerund. Okay. That's pretty easy, right? We might say something like, I love laughing. I love laughing. I love it. Okay. Laughing makes my stomach hurt. It makes my stomach hurt. Okay. So that's a gerund. Now, what's an infinitive? The infinitive is the form that uses to and then the simple verb. So you've probably heard someone say, I want to know. I want to to know. So we know that want is a verb, and we also know that know is a verb. But what about when we say, I wanted to know? Why don't we say, I wanted to knew, right? Because wanted is in the past tense, and knew would be in the past tense, K-N-E-W. Why do we still say to know? The answer is, if you have the to form, to know, to do, to go, to see, to have, all of those, you never change the form. You never say to knows. You never make it plural or change it for the subject. You never say, you never say to has. It's always the most basic form. And you never change the tense. You never say, for example, I love to walked. No. I love to walks. No. I love to walk. She loves to walk. He loves to walk. They loved to walk. It never changes. Okay. Now, the next question is, when can I use only the gerund? When can I use only the infinitive, the to form? And when can I use both? And that's where it gets a little bit tricky. So, for example, can I say, I love to laugh? I love that. Yes. Can I say, I love laughing? I love that. Yes. So in that case, the to laugh and the laughing, they can both be replaced by it or that. So we can use either one, but we can't always do that. We can't always do that. So you have to kind of just get a feeling for them and learn them one by one. Or I love, we can usually use either one. I love riding horses. I love to ride horses. We can say, I like to spend time. I love to spend time. Okay, very good. I prefer doing that. I prefer to do that. So prefer. Begin. Begin to plan. Begin planning. Both are okay. But sometimes you can only use the gerund. For example, maybe keep. Right? We wouldn't say keep to do something. Please keep to do that. But we can say keep doing something. Keep doing that. Keep doing that. Or maybe miss. 
I miss watching I miss watching movies in theaters. I miss that. Can I say I miss to watch movies in theaters? No, no, no. Why? I don't know. I don't know why. It just is. Okay? But sometimes it's only the to form. For example, you have to go. You have you have going? What does that mean, right? You seem. You seem. You seem to know. You seem knowing. You seem knowing? Ooh, sounds weird. So what you have to do is just look at and learn from example. Which ones are the ing? Which ones are the to? And just remember them. Just remember them. That's all you have to do. And look at the ones. Try to learn the ones from lists for when it can be both. But there are fewer for when it can be either the infinitive, the ing, or the to form. The to plus the verb. Okay, but just remember, just remember. The ing can be replaced by a noun, and that to form, when you when you do it, when you make it, don't change it. You never, ever change the form. It's always no. It's never new. It's never knows. It's always the same. Okay? Now, the other part of that is what is the passive part? I think that confuses the question. Passive voice would be, for example, Luke laughed at them. They were laughed at by Luke. Hmm, okay. Maybe that's for another question. I think it kind of confuses the issue, so I'm going to leave that to the side for now. Leandro, it's a good question. Guys, if you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. That is very helpful. That supports the channel. If you really want to support the channel, hit the like button. That lets that lets uh, everybody know, hey, there's a thing going on. Join, join, join. And then also, if you haven't already, check out my full courses in the links in the description. Okay. Okay. All right. Good question from Leandro. Excellent. Fantastic. I'm going to have a sip of water. Oh no, my water bottle is almost empty. Oh no, I'm thirsty and I have no water. How sad. Nihat says, hey Luke, how are you doing, buddy? Great to see you. Great to see you too, Nihat. Always good questions from you. Looking forward to yours. Um, let's see what else we've got here. I have a microphone on my shirt. I hope that's going to be okay. All right. Karina's here. Luke, could you suggest a, uh, me a good source to talk to native speakers? Um, well, I did that video before about meetup.com. I would say that's a pretty good one. But otherwise, it's tough to say. It's tough to say. Meetup.com for free. And of course, you can sign up for other um, other platforms if you want to pay. Um, you could do italki if you want to pay for teachers. It depends on your requirements, really, honestly. How often do you get a haircut? Uh, maybe I go to get a haircut maybe once a month, and then I cut my own hair maybe every once a month as well. So I'll cut my hair at a professional place, and then in the middle of that haircut, I will do my own haircut of myself, which is what this is. That's why my hair looks so stupid. Um, hello from Russia. Hello. Everyone who comments from Russia, I never know how to say your names. So that's that's just part of the... If you're wondering why, why does Luke never say my name? It's because I, I can't read it. I don't know how to read it. You got to give me something to work with. I don't know how to read it. Nihat says, uh, can you please talk about the difference between... Can you please talk about the difference between separable and inseparable phrasal verbs? I don't quite know what you mean, Nihat. Separable and inseparable. I don't know what that means. I don't. I don't understand. Do you mean? Yeah, I'm not even gonna guess. 
if I don't understand your question, it's either my fault or your fault, right? Could you give me some advice on how to improve written skills? All right, I can I can take that on. How do you pronounce Adidas? Adidas, Adidas, Adidas. Actually, you know what? Let's talk about this one because there are some shoe brands that, um, you know, it might be fun. It might be fun for us to pop open a browser and just talk through the the brand the shoe brands because some of them they are they're kind of weird and tough to say right let me pop open my browser here let me open it up open up my browser just give me one second here give me a minute do you have private courses uh, if you mean talking with me personally privately the answer is no however if you want to take my courses, I have I have many courses available that you can take that I have made that I spent a lot of time working on that I try to make as good as possible. Um, and I, I, would, I think that they're worth people's time and money, in fact. And I'm very proud of them. And some of them are quite long, uh, but um, I think worth it. I think a good investment in yourself. So. Turn it off. Turn off the TV. Um, is it crazy that I still don't quite understand? I mean, maybe it is me. Maybe it's my fault. Maybe it's my bad. I'm just looking for a. Just looking for the brands here. Top brands. Shoe brands. Oh, okay. Well, that's not low resolution though. A6 Nike New Balance Yonex. Sorry guys, I appreciate your patience. I'm just doing a Google search here because I don't want to waste everyone's time. <laughs> six brooks okay I think this one's pretty good okay 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 Best method to learn English fast? I love that question. Love it. Yes, and I think that, that the correct answer is Potter's answer. Although there are some, obviously, some things you can do. I'm going to try to, I'll try to answer it. I'll do my best. Um. Why can't I just get a simple picture of the top shoe brands? Why is this so hard? Maybe this is a lot harder than I thought. All right. So. JP Dana Book says, How do you pronounce Adidas? I've heard some people say Adidas, but uh, everyone that I've ever heard say it says Adidas. And uh, it kind of reminds me of the common mispronunciation of N I K E. So why don't we just take a take a whack at a few of these. I'm going to pop up a picture here. 
So we have we have a d i d a s, and when we say that, we say a uh, d d. We emphasize that one. So the first one is a a a. It's almost what we call a schwa sound. Put it up there. It's almost what we call a schwa sound, which means we don't stress it, right? A a a a a. It's kind of a neutral sound. And then d d is stressed. It's the stressed syllable. And then dus dus. So that could also be uh, regarded as a schwa sound or an unstressed syllable. I'm just going to put this over my face. Who cares? Now, what about what about the one on the top left here, N I K E? A lot of people say, "Oh yeah, I know about the silent E. I know all about it." M I K E, the name Mike. L I K E, like. So this must be Nike, right? Wrong. It is Nike. 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 That's how it's pronounced. N I K E is not pronounced Nike. It's one of the few words that are an exception to the silent e rule. It is pronounced Nike. Nike. Like K E Y key. Nike. Now, what about what about the A S I C S? I don't know if you guys know about that one. That would be as I've always heard it said, ASICS. 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 And the other the next one is not super popular. That one's pronounced K Swiss. I'm sure you probably know that one. Then the popular running shoe, New Balance. New Balance. 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 And then F I L A is Fila. I've heard Fila and Fila. I've always said it as Fila, like la 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 Fila. And then the other ones I don't even know about, so we'll skip those. And then there's one that's not here which I feel like I should mention just because it is a pretty popular brand. It's uh, R-E-B-O-K. R-E-B-O-K. Let me, let me see if I can... All right, excuse me. Did I say R-E-B-O-K or R-E-E-B-O-K? It's R-E-E-B-O-K. Uh, R-E-E-B-O-K. Fairly popular, maybe becoming less popular. I don't know. That is pronounced... Let me see if I can pop up a picture here. That is pronounced... Reebok, 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 Reebok. Here, I'm going to pop up a picture, pop up a picture, pop up a picture. So these would be, these would be Reebok shoes here, Reeboks. But that is actually what it looks like. The spelling and the pronunciation are, are pretty, pretty close, okay? And maybe the last one, the one that people always mix up, and in fact, one I often mix up, is the one that is branded as a cat. You know which one I'm talking about? Do you know? I'm talking about these. Let me pop up the last one here. P-U-M-A. Pronounced. Why is it so hard to get a picture of these? Pronounced. Oh, let me pop that up. Ah, do you know this one? Now, I've heard this one pronounced two different ways. One, and this is how I would say the cat's name, right? Puma. Puma. That's how I would say it. But I've heard a lot of people pronounce it as Puma. Puma. Puma? Yes, Puma. So maybe if you say Puma, it's okay. I've always said, I've always called this Puma. Poo instead of pew. Poo instead of pew. So that's my best guess on that one. I've heard different pronunciations. I hope that answers your question. JP, it's a good one. Guys, if you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe. Hit the like button. And of course, check out my full courses, which are 60% off. Guys, 60% off for a limited time in the links in the description. All right, good question from JP. Brand names are tough, right? Brand names are tough. Separable phrasal verbs are those you can split both parts. Pick up, pick it up, look up, look it up. While, sep while inseparable phrasal verbs, you can't split them. Look for, look it for. Ah, okay, I see, I see. Um, that might be more of a full topic to prepare for. I don't know if I 
could give a very good answer to that one on the spot, you know. Requires a bit of research and thinking about some good examples. I guess Nihat is talking about the rule about verbs like turn something off, turn something in. It's correct to say take off them, take away it, rubbish. Uh, okay, yeah, I get, I get you guys. I got it. I got you. Marcello or Marcello says, could you explain the use of the expression, take it for granted? Thanks. This is a really interesting one. And it's interesting because it really has two different uses. Uh, uh, but let's just talk about the basic meaning. Maybe that will help. And I want to bring in another one here. I want to use take advantage of. So I'm going to talk about take for granted, and I'm going to talk about take advantage of as well because they're close, okay? So if you take something for granted, that means that you get used to it, usually a positive thing, and you're so used to it that you no longer appreciate it. You, know, you no longer feel that feeling of appreciation of, oh, this is, I'm so lucky that I get to have that right now maybe you never appreciated it that's possible too maybe you should and then you don't realize that you should have appreciated it until you lose it and then you say to yourself well I really took that for granted so this is used in a couple of different ways one way it's used is to talk about something we gain a new appreciation for only after something has happened something has gone wrong we have maybe just accepted that our parents would support us. I have tough financial times. My parents will always send me a couple thousand dollars to help me out if I ever get in trouble. Well, what if they decide, you know what? We don't want to help anymore. You need to support yourself. No support from us financially. Sorry. Whoa. I guess I always took for granted that if I needed help, my parents would just support me and help me out when I needed it. I just assumed that. It was an assumption that I made. I never appreciated it. So now not only do I have an appreciation for what they did, but now I maybe understand my, my actual financial situation much better. <laughs> and maybe that means I make a positive change and really learn to support myself. Or maybe that means I go back to my parents and say, please, 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 now I appreciate you. I never did before. So it could be a positive thing. The positive meaning would be that I actually learn how to support myself because I feel real danger for the first time. And the negative meaning might be that now I'm in a bad situation and I understand for the first time how lucky I was to have my parents support okay so take for granted related to that sort of thing can be used in lots of different ways now I want to quickly mention take advantage of so this one is interesting because it's similar in one sense and not in another if you take advantage of for example just use the parents example you take advantage of your parents you you know that they will support you financially whenever you need help. And so you don't really try that hard. And whenever you need help, you just say, yeah, okay, give me $1,000. Give me $2,000, mom or dad. And so your parents might feel, okay, we can. But uh, we feel like you're using us a little bit. Have you ever felt used by someone? That they know you've been kind to them. And they don't feel deeply thankful. They've started to take your kindness for granted. And now they're going to use more of your kindness. I always use the example of someone asks if they can stay at my house for a week because they're having a tough time. And I say, sure, absolutely. You're my friend. I want to help you. For a week, right? Yes, I'm going to work hard. I'm going to find my own apartment. Just having a really tough time this week. Okay, okay. A week. Got it. But then, week passes, two weeks pass, 
And they start to think, oh, yeah, Luke is just very kind. He loves helping me and will help me as long as I need. I can stay at Luke's house as long as I want. Well, we said a week, right? So I'm starting to feel that you're using me in a negative way, that you're you're taking that initial kindness and you're stretching it out way more than I expected. And now that's starting to cause some issues in our friendship. I'm starting to feel like you don't really appreciate my initial kindness. I'm starting to feel like you're taking me for granted. Okay? So don't take me for granted. Don't take my friendship for granted. And don't take my generosity for granted. By the way, I am that kind of person. I'm the kind of person where if I say, if I say you can stay at my house for a week, if you stay longer than a week, it's going to cause a pro It's a problem. <laughs> it's a problem. I will start to hate you <laughs> very soon. Um, maybe that's my, my fault. Now, the other meaning of take advantage, which is also, which is interesting and totally different, is to use what you have access to in a positive way. So think about it like this. You work for a university, okay? And one of the benefits, maybe you just work in the library. You're a librarian. You work in the university. You're not a student. You just work there. One of the advantages of that, one of the benefits of that, advantages, benefits, whatever, is that your kids then can attend the university tuition free. So your kids grow up, they can, if they decide to go to that university and get into that university, they can go without paying. Whoa. So your kid grows up, it's time to go to university, they get accepted to several different schools and they say, mom or dad, I want to go to another school. And you say, ah, I've been working at this university for the last 15 years so that we could take advantage of this great thing, which is tuition free education. And you want to go to another school? We should take advantage of this chance to take advantage of an opportunity, to take advantage of a resource, to take advantage of a tool, to take advantage of a position that you have. This, of course, can be a negative thing. To take advantage of others can be very negative. If, for example, you're, you're using your access in a way that only benefits you and hurts others, yes, that's bad. But to take advantage of a resource, you have access to something that others don't have access to and you don't use it, oh, then you're not taking advantage of that, right? You pay $800 a month for your health insurance and you never visit the doctor. Well, you're not taking advantage of your great health insurance, right? To take advantage of it would be to use it. And that's a positive meaning that has a good or positive meaning or connotation, okay? So that's take for granted. That's take advantage of. Similar in some ways, different in others. And, uh, I would recommend looking at more examples. For example, on thefreedictionary.com, you can find more examples of these, really get a feeling for how to use them. They're very useful. All right, that's it for that question. It's a good one. If you haven't already, guys, don't forget to subscribe and also hit the like button. I would appreciate that. Hit the like button so that uh, whether you're watching on YouTube or Facebook or Periscope or Twitch or wherever, they know, hey, there's a thing happening here, and they can recommend the videos and streams. Okay, so do that. And if you want to improve your English in the long term, if you really want to improve, then check out my full English courses in the links in the description. They are 60% off, which is a lot if you didn't know. 60% off, that's a big deal. That's a huge deal. Check those out. Okay, Marcello. Is it Marcello or Marcello? I feel like if it's Italian, it should be Marcello, not Marcello. I don't know. Get your act together and let's get the hang of it. What can you say about these expressions? All right, that's not a bad question here. 
I lend my friend money, but I don't mind. See, I wish I were more like you, Potter, where I would lend my friend money, and then I just don't care if they take 10 years to pay it back. I just say, oh, it's my friend. I don't mind. I wish I were more like you, but I'm not more like you. If I lend my friend money, and they just think, oh, that's, well, they lent me money. I can take 10 years to pay it back. It will be bad news for our friendship. I will start to think negatively of them. Not because I need the $10 back. It's because I don't respect people who do things and say they're going to do something and then don't do it. I don't like that. I don't like when people do that, right? I don't care who it is. Someone has borrowed money from me. I want them to pay me back on principle. Because I don't, I don't like being friends with people who don't do that sort of thing. Anyway, that's a little personal, right? All right. Um, how to get rid of comparing our English to others who are better than us? It's <laughs> a good question, actually. I'm trying to think about how to answer that one. Before I do that, guys, I want to talk about my main topic for today, okay? So, main topic for today. I'm going to share about this, and then we'll get back into the questions. You probably know what an acronym is. You probably use them all the time. You've probably used OMG. Oh, my God. LOL. Laugh out loud. You've probably used these, right? Well, I want to talk about some that are useful that you may not know that I actually use because I feel like there are either these really common ones that everybody uses, that everybody knows, or you get taught some that are interesting but totally useless. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to share some acronyms that you can actually use. We're going to talk about 10 acronyms that are really useful that I use very often. Some of them related to work, some of them related to life. I'm going to assume you know what LOL means. I'm going to assume you know what OMG means. But let's just quickly say before we start with these, just so we're all very clear what an acronym is. This is where each letter of this word usually a capital, all capital letter word, stands for another word. Like ATM stands for automatic teller machine. So if you ever hear someone say, I need to go to the ATM machine, you should say, M already means machine. What's wrong with you? I do it though. I sometimes say ATM machine. And uh, what I'm really saying there is automatic teller machine machine. This is different than an abbreviation which is just a shortened version of the word, like DR, doctor, shortened to DR, right? That's different. That's an abbreviation, okay? So, give you the acronym. I'm going to give you an example. We're going to go through 10 of these, okay? If you want to share others that you find useful or that you've seen, please do that in the comments. Now, this is one that's relatively new, but I actually use it quite often. TLDR. You'll see this written TLDR like this with the semicolon in between TLDR. But you'll also see it written as all caps without the semicolon. And you'll also see it written as just TLDR, all lowercase, all small letters. An example would be, please just give me the TLDR. Now, TLDR means too long, didn't read. That means I want you to just give me the important details. I don't have time to look at all of this. I didn't see the whole article you shared. So you sent an article to me. I don't have time to actually look at the whole thing. So if we want to talk about this, just give me the TLDR. Give me the main ideas. Give me the short version. Give me a quick summary. Then we can talk about it. TLDR. How about IMO? I actually use this one pretty often. This one looks a lot better. IMO. Now, you wouldn't say IMO. So some of these are text only, and some of these you would actually say. For example, TLDR. Someone might actually say, speak TLDR and write it. But you wouldn't say IMO. You would probably write IMO, 
But if you're going to say this, you're going to say, in my opinion. You'll actually say the whole thing, right? So just be careful which ones are written, which ones are spoken, and how, if they're written like this, how it would be said. So this would still be, this would still be in my opinion. And, you know, if you say too long didn't read, that would actually be weird. So no one will say, give me the too long didn't read. There you would only say the acronym TLDR. How about this one? FYI, for your information. Just an FYI, I will be OOO today out of office. That's just a bonus, a bonus one. That one, I don't know if that one will be common in 10 years, but I think FYI probably will be. Now notice I could put an N here, just an FYI. So I could say it is a thing. It is a, a what? A for your information. Well, the grammar of a uh, for your information doesn't really make sense, but we still say it, right? And we, we would actually communicate it as an FYI, an FYI, even though it starts with an F. Sounds a little weird, right? You could say for your information if you want to say the whole thing, but this is one that could be either. You could say FYI, I'm going to be out of office today, or for your information, I'm going to be out of office today. For that one, I would say it's more common to say FYI, just FYI. I don't usually use an. I just say, hey, FYI, hey, just FYI, I won't be, I won't be at that meeting today, just, just to let you know. I'm just telling you that. If you don't agree, I'm not telling you so that we can have a conversation. FYI is a one-way thing. Here you go. Information for you. You don't need to disagree with me or say, no, 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 you don't, you can't do that. I'm not asking for your permission. I'm just letting you know what's going on, okay? So that would be how we use F-Y-I. And uh, be careful with O-O-O because, yeah, I don't know how long that one's going to last. How about ETA? What's the ETA on the pizza? What's the ETA on the pizza? This one we would actually write and say as ETA because ETA stands for estimated time of arrival. Ugh, that's pretty long, right? <laughs> estimated time of arrival, estimated time of arrival. What is the estimated time of arrival? It sounds so formal, but ETA is so short and easy to use. You can use it for work-related things. You can use it in your daily life. My pizza example, what's the ETA on the pizza? That means when is the pizza going to arrive? When do you think it'll be here? Notice I say the ETA. Often we put the in front of ETA. Can you give me an ETA on the pizza? That means when do you think it will arrive, okay? What's the ETA on this, something work-related? Uh, Tuesday afternoon, can you give me an ETA on that? And uh, Tuesday afternoon, is that okay? Yeah, that's okay, that's okay. So this is great because you can write it like this, say it like this, and it's both casual and formal. How about CTA? This is generally only for work-related stuff. If you have a meeting and then someone has to do something, the actions that you have to do, of course, those are called action items, right? But if you wanna give somebody actions, things that they need to actually do in a meeting or for another situation I'll mention quickly, CTA, call to action, call to action. Do I have any CTAs from this call? That means we were on a meeting and there are a lot of things that were talked about. Somebody was taking notes. I know that there was something I'm supposed to do, but I can't remember what that thing is, right? So I say, do I have any CTAs? Now you could say action items. That's popular too for work, but CTAs is also really, really common. Now, the other way that we would use CTA would be for marketing, especially. After you have a, an advertisement, what do you want people to do? What's the CTA? Click on this button, subscribe to this, buy my courses, right? That's the call to action. This is what I want you to do next. That's more of a marketing thing, but I think it's most useful for work-related stuff. Now, AKA, this is also known as, remember known starts with a K, also known as, often written, strangely, as AKA with all lowercase letters. 
all small letters. So, Thomas Maypother, a.k.a. Tom Cruise, a.k.a. And you would say a.k.a. usually. If you want to say also known as, it's all right, it's fine. But I think it's more common, a little bit more natural to use a.k.a. And it's okay if you write it all small or low, lowercase letters. I don't know if you knew this, but Tom Cruise's real name is Thomas Maypother the third, or maybe it's the fourth, third or fourth, which means his father was named Thomas Maypother, and his father was named Thomas Maypother. Not a very uh, memorable name, so he changed it to Tom Cruise. But I think his legal name may still be Thomas Maypother, a.k.a. Tom Cruise. DIY. Do it yourself. Do it yourself. My home renovation won't be DIY. So my, my little brother, he he's working on a house project, and a lot of what he's doing is DIY. Now, I probably wouldn't say do it yourself because it sounds weird to say it is DIY. It is do it yourself. If you do that, you would put a hyphen between each word. Do hyphen it hyphen yourself. Then you could say, because that's now one word, this project is do it yourself. Still sounds a little weird to me. I would recommend you just use DIY. If you're a DIY person, that means you're the type of person who likes to build it yourself, make it yourself, plan it yourself. If you're not a DIY person, you like to hire someone to come in and make it or do it for you. I'm not, I'm not very DIY. I'm not really a DIY type of person. So my little brother is doing his home renovation DIY. But if I were doing a home renovation, I would not do it DIY. I would hire a bunch of people and have them do it. But then would I say, so they're doing it DIY? No, because they're professionals. So if they're professionals, then they're not doing it DIY because that's their job. DIY is when a normal person does something that they would otherwise hire professionals to do, like make a birdhouse or do home renovations or put a bookshelf together or build a computer, a gaming computer, right? And so I would say I'm not a very I'm not a very DIY person, although I do enjoy putting IKEA furniture together. That is uh, that is fun for me. All right. We have a couple more here. I'm sure you know this one already. You've got to know this one. BTW. You can see this one as big B, little T, big W or all big letters, big B, big T, big W or all small letters, little B, little T, little W. Okay. Now this one usually, if you put it at the beginning, will have a comma after it if you write it, right? BTW, by the way, by the way, do you need me to grab? And then I have here STH. This is an abbreviation, not an acronym. An abbreviation is a shortened version of one word, not several words put together. And STH is, of course, something. So then the question would be, We've talked about some that are spoken and some that are only written, right? Can we say BTW? Hey, BTW, could you please? No. This is one of the ones that we don't speak, okay? We would speak some of the other ones that we talked about, like DIY. We would actually say DIY, but we would not say, hey, BTW, never spoken, okay? Only written. If you're going to say it, you would say, by the way, say the whole thing. Okay. So the last one we're going to talk about here is TBD. TBD. To be decided. That means we haven't decided yet. What haven't we decided? We haven't decided the name. We haven't decided the time. We haven't decided the place. So you often see on an invitation, we're going to be meeting next Sunday at 6.30. And then you'll see at the end, location TBD, place TBD. That means we're still working on the, the actual meeting location. It's going to be in Midtown, Manhattan, but we don't know exactly where. Location TBD. That means we have to decide the location still, and we're working on it. And usually that sentence will not be grammatical. You don't need to write a whole sentence. Location TBD is not a complete 
usually not a complete sentence. Now, what about saying this one? Would we say TBD? You could. Some people say TBD. I think, I think it's probably 50-50 uh, people who say actually speak TBD compared to to be decided. The location is to be decided. The location is TBD. Eh, both of those sound okay to me. Now, ones I didn't mention, FOMO, IDK, and LOL. I'm not mentioning these because I don't use them. They're pretty popular. I never say, you'll never see me write LOL, ever. This is only text, but I never, ever use it because I don't like it. I don't know why. IDK, I don't know. I say I don't know, of course, but I don't usually text IDK. We don't say. Nobody says IDK unless they're insane. And then FOMO is one that's very popular recently. This has been very popular during this uh, whole Robin Hood investing thing where people are afraid that they're going to miss out on some investing opportunity and that makes them really scared of whether or not they should cash in their 401k or their retirement funds so that they can invest in stocks. Fear of missing out. I, I never use it, but a lot of people are using that one these days. So those are 10 common acronyms that I actually use and some examples for how I use them. If you have any questions about these, please let me know. If you think I missed some really useful ones or really interesting ones, leave a comment. Let me know in the comments. If you guys haven't already, don't forget to subscribe. Help out the channel by hitting the like button and check out my full courses in the links in the description. Those are right now 60% off, so a big discount on those. All right. Good. Any questions on that? Someone someone added here. Um, I saw one. I saw a good one that I might have missed. Oh, TMI, too much information. That is a good one. I agree. It's when someone shares, well, too much information. <laughs> Maybe personal information. It's a little awkward or private information. Uh, something that's going on with their romantic partner. Nobody wants to know, right? Nobody wants to know. All right, I think I can answer maybe one or two more questions. And by the way, if you guys are interested, I just opened, I know it's a new thing, but I just opened a uh, an account on Clubhouse. So if you want, I opened a room in Clubhouse. I'm going to be doing some streaming here in this app. Uh, you can find me at 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 symbol Luke Pretty L U K E P R I D D Y. Can someone type that in the chat for me? I would appreciate it. Someone type it in the chat. And if you're on Clubhouse, you can you can follow me. I would appreciate that. I'm just testing it out for now, but uh, it seems like a pretty cool app. All right, let's see what questions I've missed here. Dwayne Johnson, a.k.a. The Rock. Yes, indeed. So I'm going to answer Mohammed's question here. Mohammed Shaker or Shakur, would be my guess about how to say that one, says how to get rid of comparing our English to others who are better than us. This is a good, this is a good question. And I think we all probably deal with this, not only with English, right? But in general. Oh, I have, I don't have as many followers as this person. Oh, this person has a better job than me. Oh, this person is thinner than me. Oh, whatever. This person has a better car than me. This is a classic human thing, right? We, we look at others and then we look at ourselves and then we decide that others are better than us because they have something we don't have, and then we feel bad. So the, the question to ask yourself in this case is, does that comparison, because I don't want to tell you not to compare yourself to others who are better than you. That's, I think, not the right question to ask. The right question to ask is, does comparing yourself to others 
motivate you and push you to do more and improve in some way? Or does it discourage you and decrease your motivation to do more? And I'm answering this question not only for English, but in general. So, so if you feel defeated by someone else's success and it causes you to go into a depressive state and just lay on the sofa and eat cheesy balls and watch Netflix for nine hours, then I would say you need to avoid that. Don't, don't look at that. Don't compare yourself to others at all. Just avoid it. Because that thing, doing that, comparing yourself, causes a negative response in you. But if you're the type of person who's very competitive and you see someone else out there and it makes you a little bit angry and you feel frustrated and you think, I've got to, I've got to catch them and beat them, haha. -ha. If that's your response, then that might be a useful tool for you to push you to work towards something, right? That might be really, really useful. So first ask yourself that question. And maybe for English, it works, but for making money, it doesn't. Or for English, it works, and getting, getting a car, it doesn't. You see someone else's car, and it makes you sad and depressed. But okay, so just don't think about other people's cars. But for English, does it work or not? Okay. If it doesn't work, what you should do then is completely focus on yourself and say to yourself, I'm not going to worry about how good other people are. There are people who are better than me, people who are not as good as me, and I know that it's not fair to compare myself to them. To them. So what I need to do instead is have a way to measure my progress, have my own goals, figure out a way to know if I'm actually moving toward my goals or not, right? And then make a plan for how to, to move in that direction. So maybe, for example, you say to yourself, well, I'm really not confident when I, when I speak in front of others. Sometimes I have to speak English at work and I, feel, I don't feel comfortable. I don't know what to say. I can't find my words. All right, so write that one down. And then right beside it, a little goal. I want to feel comfortable talking with my colleagues and it can be different for for everybody maybe your maybe your goal is something more concrete something you can see a real number for example i want to get a 7 on the ielts exam okay that's a very clear goal it's a very clear goal so you make a plan and you work toward that goal okay maybe it's how many words or phrases you feel you you know or don't know Maybe you feel like you don't know all these things in movies that you hear people say, these references and these idioms, these expressions. So that makes you feel frustrated in yourself. Maybe you say, I'm going to learn 20 a week. But when you learn them, make sure that you actually know them and you can use them. Make sure that you're actually using them in sentences. If you learn a phrasal verb or an idiom, make sure you're doing it in the right way. So try to connect your goal, try to connect your plan, and try to have a way to track your progress or feel like you're moving in the right direction. And if you feel motivated by comparing yourself to others, use that. But if you don't, avoid it. And that, that works for me for other things as well. Sometimes I feel motivated by it. Sometimes I don't. Hopefully that helps a little bit, Muhammad. The first question would be to ask yourself, I think, what am I trying to achieve? And what are my weak areas? And what are my strong areas? And write that down and make a little map for yourself and then go from there. Guys, if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe. Also, I would appreciate if you could hit the like button. Don't forget to do that. And you can also check out my full courses in the links in the description. Okay. Potter says, hey, Mamma Mia, there is a anecdote. It is said to be real. Two students were living in the same room in the dormitory. The second one was extremely successful. The first one was frustrated with it. And he even 
was treated in the psychiatric hospital for depression. After many years, it turned out that the second one was Elon Musk. <laughs> ah, interesting. So that was motivating to him? Oh, oh, I see. The first one was the first one was the one uh, he was comparing himself. Right, so that's not healthy. Don't compare yourself to the most successful person on the planet. That's not a good idea. It's not going to make you happy. R. Slusher says, I love you, the best teacher ever. Well, that's very nice. That's very kind of you. Oh, thank you. Potter says, what time is it there? Desi. So you're not talking to me. Okay. Can we master English through lessons and not practice? What do you mean by lessons? Because lessons could be practice. Fala, right? I would assume that in a lesson you would also have practice. Otherwise, what kind of lesson is it? So maybe you can be a little more specific there. Desi says, do you use ASAP for speaking? Uh, yes, people do say ASAP as well. You can write ASAP. You can also say ASAP as soon as possible. Desi says it's 2.39 p.m. Why is everyone always interested in talking about what time it is? I just feel like that's kind of boring, guys. It's boring. Boring. All right. I feel like I missed a really good question that I read earlier, and I want to answer it. But I feel like I missed it. Let me just fast. Uh, uh, uh. I feel like I'm missing a great question, but now I can't find the question that someone asked. I don't know. Maybe I can't find it. It's fine. All right. Guys, I can think I think I can take one more question and then I think we'll call it a day. We'll stop for today. Greetings, Desi says. Greetings from Lima, Peru. Thanks, thanks, thanks. Get your act together, and let's get the hang of it. What can you say about these expressions? All right. This will be, I think, our last question of the day. Nihat says, get your act together, and let's get the hang of it. What can you say about these two? Well, I'll be honest with you, Nihat. I don't know why you're putting these together, because they're different. But let's talk about what each of these means and how we might use them. Someone says, get your act together. Then someone is either disappointing you or they're not living up to their potential. They're not as good as they could be. They're not doing as well as you think they should or even as well as they think they should. Right? So let's say the classic example. There's a husband and a wife and they have a child. A newborn child. One time I actually saw this. So so I was living in China and there are these um, there are these video game places. I guess they're called I guess what are they called? They're called uh, internet cafe. Yeah, I guess they're internet cafes. People people play games there, right? They go there to play video games. Sorry about the noise. There's some someone is doing construction or washing dishes or something. It's pretty noisy. Um, so in the very clear memory that I have, there is a woman screaming outside of an internet cafe. And then after a couple minutes, a very sad looking man came out of the internet cafe. Clearly her husband. She had a baby under her arm. And she was really yelling at him. And apparently he had been in the internet cafe playing video games all day. And so what was she angry about? Well, 
he's obviously not contributing to the family. He's not being supportive. He's not uh, living up to his potential. He's not maybe making more money to support his new child that he's just had, right? And, uh, yeah, sorry about all the noise, guys. I, I apologize. Uh, he's, he's uh, you know, just being a lazy person addicted to video games. So, if you wanted to boil that criticism down into a few words to say to that man, you would say, get your act together. That would be the perfect example. Things are not where they should be. You're not doing what you should. You're slacking. You're a loser. You're making too many mistakes. You're not focused. Whatever it may be, if you wanted to put that criticism into a few words, it would be, get your act together. And you could say it to yourself, I really need to get my act together. Now, it's used in more specific situations. It's not only for your whole life, right, and big things that are going on in your life. It could be in a very small area, right? Maybe we're just talking about video games. And in the category of video games, in the video games that I play, I'm not really focused today. I'm thinking about something else. I'm playing video games with a group of friends, and I'm not doing as well as I should in the game. And I say to myself, all right, sorry, guys, I, I apologize. I messed up there. I'm going to get my act together. You can use it in those narrow situations, too. That's totally, totally fine. Okay. Now, what about let's get the hang of it? Let's just take out the let's part, okay, and say get the hang of something. So this would be when you try something and it's difficult. You don't feel comfortable doing it. You feel nervous. You feel not very confident in, in how to do it. Maybe that's driving for the first time. Maybe it's tennis. You're learning tennis for the first time. Maybe it's writing. Maybe it's speaking English. Whatever it may be, you're not used to doing it. You're not super comfortable doing it. And to get comfortable doing it, to get used to doing it, you have to do it. And after repeated practice, you start to feel more confident. You start, you start to feel more comfortable. So to get the hang of something is not just to learn it. Okay, now I know it. It's to gain confidence in it, to feel more comfortable doing it. And then because you're more comfortable and more confident, you then can do it better. And it's usually skills related rather than knowledge related. It's usually about ability rather than what you know, right? So get the hang of driving. Get the hang of speaking in public. I still haven't quite got the hang of managing a live class. Or I still can't quite get the hang of this game that I'm playing. For all of those things, you could say, I finally started to get the hang of it. I haven't yet quite got the hang of it. Or I hope I can get the hang of it soon. Or if I do it more, I think I will get the hang of it. There are so many variations of this, so many different ways to use it. But that's the main idea. So I know those are two very different expressions, but I hope I answered your question, Nihat. Guys, if you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to hit the like button and also Check out my full courses in the links in the description. All right. Okay. Guys, I think we're going to call it a day for today. I appreciate all the questions. I appreciate the comments. I appreciate all of that stuff. Thank you so much. We'll be back certainly next week. We'll do some more of these. So get your questions ready. Practice, practice. Uh, watch movies, have fun, enjoy the rest of your weekend if it is the weekend for you. If not, enjoy your Monday. And uh, I'll talk to you guys soon. Oh, and don't forget to, if you want, if you're on, if you're on um, Clubhouse, follow me on Clubhouse. I might be there too early. I don't know. It's not that widespread yet. But if you are on Clubhouse, feel free to follow me there at Luke Pretty at L U K E P R I. D D Y. All right. 